Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to break down what makes Terraria popular in three components. Popular is a, subject a suggestive term. <laughs> three components. What? Not one, not two, but three. That's, that's six. Three components. I have my educational hat on here, as you can very clearly see. I'm going to recline because I can. I'm going to look quizzical. The first component is that of the tutorial. People love tutorials that like to learn how to play. What we have, <laughs> what we have tricked them into doing is believing that Terraria is a tutorial, which is technically true. Who thinks that? However, <laughs> it is the most drawn out tutorial there is, combined with the second element. The second element being that of the Freudian superego Accompanied by the idiot, the Freudian superego being the more educated of the two. The tutorial is not only going out to the masses. I can't hold the camera still. It's going out to the idiot of the trio who's standing over there. Yet, there is an asynchronicity as a result of the Freudian superego barely knowing more than the person he is trying to educate. This is like the scene in The Matrix with the guy in the white suit. He was talking about Fortnite the night before. Uh, we also that was my favorite tweet. Yeah. Because I remember, um, I remember you always making fun of him for critiquing games in his sleep. <laughs> and so this is so believable to me, the idea of him just like, all the way Fortnite is a garbage game. <laughs> He would uh, have these micro dreams, basically. Uh, it's like a restless mind, like a stream of consciousness where your neurons are just firing. I was like, okay, we're going to do this Inception style. This is your token. <laughs> and I kid you not, for the three days, I think, leading up, this is what he had next to him in bed the entire time. And like every once in a while, you just see him reach over for it and, and he would pick it up and hold it. And that's how he knew that this was the actual real world and not these micro dreams because he was almost like living in vr that's that's what he would right. complain about he would complain about the frame rate the quality um of of his micro dreams of, of his micro dreams <laughs> because he thought that he he had this vr the portable <laughs> vr you know that that would go uh, I can't even remember what it's what it's called now that he thought that he was doing vr and he would complain about how things were drawn it's like oh gosh i can't even like why it's like why did they do this 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 doesn't make any sense why are they having me go through this hallway into this room that could have been done so much better complaining about it, critiquing until the end critiquing and, and yeah and critiquing so, his own dreams yes god what a legend <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> oh. but yeah i remember him being still kind of out of it when um when clark was born and Aww, yeah, he, you know, obviously medicated. John is very interesting. Um, but I remember him reading like the update and everything. He's like, is that a last name? Isn't that a last name? And I'm just like, oh, <laughs> and, and he's like, why does it have an E? But e even with an E, isn't that a last name? And I'm just like, I'm like, you, no comment on, oh, this baby is so cute. Oh, you know, so proud of Duger. Her last name. Does she no. know? <laughs> Does she know? We need to tell her. <laughs> I will now wait for you to do something entertaining. Is it not going to happen? Probably not. Well, that's a disappointment. That is not energy efficient. Swift space. This is swift space. <laughs> loved it i loved it yeah we need to we need to we need Last to memorialize credit. the fact that
every time Krendo was on, every <laughs> time, John would be like, I'm never, never inviting again. him back ever again. <laughs> exactly. And every time he'd do it, he'd just keep doing it. And every time he'd be like, well, that was a mistake. And then he'd just invite him back again. Every mm -hmm. time. Every time. Krendo's a way of warming his way into your heart. And, um, and so we were going to do that video together. And when we, when we started recording it, we got like five minutes into the recording and then he stopped and he goes, you haven't said anything in five <laughs> minutes. Are you okay? And I was like, I'm really nervous. I've never done a video like this before. Like, I don't know what to say. And he was like, it's okay. We could start over as many times as you want. Just, just say whatever comes to your mind. And if you, if you go and look at that video, um, it's a lot of me just like laughing to fill space because I didn't know, <laughs> I didn't know what to say or what to do, but he was so understanding. It was just like, just say, you know, whatever comes to your mind, like trust yourself. Um, and he was always just so like supportive of me, um, in terms of, of making content and being opinionated and being okay with being opinionated. You know, I know yeah. the internet saw John as like. A beacon, like, we must be 60 FPS, and it must have this, this, this is how I think, and I'm very opinionated. But I, I, we, let we the record better. show, let the record show he was a goofy goober, and will right. continue in my mind to be so. Okay. Ah! Ooh, nah! <laughs> yeah, this was incredibly stupid, but it's what you wanted to see, admit it. You want to see my pain. You want to see me suffer. It's ah, everything's breaking. This is this is all you want from me. You just want to laugh at my misfortunes. I am bastards. Come on. Oh yeah. Mmm. Yeah. Feels good. Ooh. 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 Is it skills? It's mad skills, ladies and gentlemen. I wish. You know what? I wish the. I wish the fucking camera would actually stay behind your goddamn bike. It doesn't. It drifts off at random, and you have to try and correct it. <laughs> the animations! Oh my god! I'm gonna grab thin air! Use the force, Luke! Watch the breaking the neck animation again. <laughs> perfect! Absolutely perfect! I can't imagine that they would need to change that at all. There's random slowdowns as well. Why did the bike explode? There's no reason for that! Every now and again, it seems like, you know what we're really going to do is slow the game down so you can really soak in, drink in the awesomeness. Like, n <laughs> oh my god, did you see that? <laughs> oh, did you see that? oh, wow. I can't stay. My people need me. <laughs> what is this game? You know, he, he did always want the best for everybody, despite what uh, some people might say um, or how he might have appeared, you know, stoic as he was. Um, but he, he did. He had a heart of gold. He didn't expose it very often to people he didn't know in person, um, you know, or friends or people that he didn't uh, wasn't acquainted with or worked with. Um, but he, when he let his guard down, it was a very heartwarming and beautiful thing, and he was a barrel of laughs. Wait, where's... Wait, can I do this? No. I love... I love... I love how somewhere... Someone... Someone once right now has the dream. I'm like, one day, I want to do a podcast where I get to eat pins and drink really crappy champagne. It is a dream that not everyone... Not everyone will see. You, you have to have at least sixteen dollars in order to pull this off. <laughs> sixteen, sixteen dollars, and two friends willing to be stupid with you. In, in May, not everyone can do this. Okay, <laughs> this is a video one. response. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I still don't have a pin. I right. got the cake in my hand. Wait, hold guys. on. We have yeah, you can't put it in your hand because you'll you'll be able to tell by the shape. What? This is gonna have They're to be a direct shit. entry. They don't look I like think what? I think this is I'm gonna let you know I'm pretty sure this is someone fetish right now. Feeding Dodger. <laughs> someone someone right now is like, oh <laughs> my god. I dream about this. I'm ready. Alright. <laughs> 
Konami. Is someone graduating? Konami. Brains like dried salami killed off Silent Hill. Fuck, fuck Konami. Yes, we certainly will. Fuck, fuck Konami. Get on the treadmill. Hey, but Barely a tsunami. Dickheads with no chance. The one thing I I just, I will always, always, always remember is that he was able to recall like facts, just like, boom. Like most people are like, oh, let me go to the Wikipedia for this and find out. Like, sort of thing always blows my mind. Yeah. It's like, has this developer made anything else or or something? No, he would know. And he'd be able to tell me, no, they were from this studio. And then before that, they worked at this studio and they made this game. Uh, But this game sucked because it had this element in it and they carried the element into a different game. But this was during a time when the element was very popular and gaming culture. And I'm just like, who? He knew his shit, man. He He was like, John is, was, is (laughs) a force in gaming that was very necessary is is accurate is that doesn't change yeah for sure ladies and gentlemen my name is total biscuit for those who haven't seen my content before i'm a games critic i do first impressions of video games i like to focus on indie titles and my mission is to promote good games help them get the sales that they deserve and protect consumers from terrible purchases i like to think that that's what any critic does Today I'd like to talk to you about someone that's not interested in consumer protection and created a game that any sane person would consider a terrible purchase. Those people are the great minds behind Day One Gary's Incident, a first-person survival game developed by Wild Game Studios. There are people who make a living on YouTube by creating videos which have an ad placed on them. Depending on the size of the audience, you can make decent money this way, similar to the way a television station works. As you might imagine, this is a bit of a minefield. Partners have to be careful not to infringe copyright with their work, and YouTube is extremely skittish about that. As a result, networks were formed which made blanket agreements with YouTube to monetize gaming content. The networks are responsible for any violation of YouTube's terms of service and police their own channels. At least that's the theory. Unfortunately, YouTube decided it didn't really want to do things this way and allowed companies to use an automated claiming system to immediately take down content that they claimed belonged to them. For the most part, games developers and publishers are extremely sensible and don't use this system. You see, critique and review are protected by US fair use doctrine, and rightfully so. The idea that you could use copyright law as a spear to attack those who are criticizing you is an affront to free speech and freedom of the press. It's horrendously anti-consumer. It's unquestionably censorship. Imagine, if you will, for a moment, a world where the only reviews of products that are allowed to stick around were positive. How many people would end up being taken in by misleading marketing? How much money would be wasted on products that are clearly not up to scratch? Critique exists to protect consumers from unscrupulous companies and is a necessary part of our society. Wild Game Studio disagrees. I'm not even going to talk about this. There's a a shitload of Twitch streamers, a shitload of YouTubers that are paid by G2A. The fucking tournaments that are paid by G2A. I mean, I had to go and fucking work for one, and I was pissed. It's so much And you know know what they fucking told me? It's like... They they threw so much money at us that we literally could not refuse. That that's no, basically you know that's I'll probably exactly never get hired for that tournament again for saying that. But that's that's, exactly that's it. That is, that is what they fucking do. They threw yes. they throw a shitload of money people. They throw enough money at people for them to not care. 
you know, yes. or to feign ignorance or whatever. That's, and I'm sorry, no. but even after all this, I've been saying this for fucking years about G2A. There have been so many instances, years and fucking years, the natural selection. Two incidents, there was issues with fucking Snipe, really three. There have been multiple competitors to G2A that have had to shut down because of the sheer amount of credit card fraud that has happened, which has been directly tied into G2A. That Where do you think the fucking keys went from G2A's competitors? Oh, magically they appeared on G2A being sold for a profit. Gee, I wonder if G2A is happy with that. I wonder if they would do anything to stop their competitors being shut down through this fraud. Maybe they fucking wouldn't, because it's not in their best interest to do that. I mean, fuck, they just issued a goddamn statement to a Russian website that said, oh, if you're having problems with chargebacks, why don't you use our G2A pay payment solution for your store? I say, like, are you fucking for real? Like, your site sells my stolen goods, and you want me to use your payment system to avoid it selling my stolen goods. You won't stop like them selling the stolen goods, like but you'll take a chunk from my payment solution. Are you like fucking you for real? And when it comes down to fucking G2A, I don't care if it was $450 or 45 fucking cents. It's stolen fucking goods. Stop supporting people that steal shit! I feel Jesus! Like I'm The laws are very, very clear, especially in the United States, when it comes to the disclosure of sponsored agreements, when it comes to conflicts of interest, when it comes to outright lying to your audience for money. Those laws are pretty damn clear at this point. Ignorance is absolutely no excuse, especially when some of these channels are turning over literally millions of dollars every year. When you're starting to handle that amount of money, it's about time that you learn how to run a business, how to operate like a professional, how to actually take responsibility for the huge audience and the massive amount of trust that is being put in you as a content creator. It's about time that you realize how damn privileged you are, how unbelievably lucky you are to have a job like this, how thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people would love to have your job. Oh, they would. And yet, despite the fact that you enjoy this seemingly limitless success on the back of a job which is a dream for many people, you still can't bring yourself to be honest. You still can't bring yourself to properly disclose and add a brand deal, a sponsorship, or when you're literally involved in the company. And that's not a suggestion, that's not a kindness to the viewers, and you certainly should never be proud of having properly disclosed it, because in the United States, it's literally the fucking law. When you see these channels squirm every time they get called out, come up with ridiculous excuses, or in the most unbelievably insulting fashion, say, well, oh, I'm not technically doing anything wrong. If you have to rely on technicalities to claim that you're not breaking the law, if you have to resort to technicalities because your moral code is so utterly broken that you can't understand what it is that you're doing wrong, then frankly, you're the scum on my boot and I want you off this fucking network. You know, I have defended YouTube content creators for years when it comes to criticism from traditional media that have said that YouTube is a wild west, YouTube is unprofessional, YouTube is filled with people who are willing to lie to you for money. And yet, you know what? You make me look like a fucking idiot for doing that. Every channel that regularly takes undisclosed brand deals and sponsorships, that engages with shady websites for cash, that shills a crappy product claiming it's their favorite and they use it every day without having even touched it once. Every channel that with a straight face has the audacity to sit down in front of a microphone and webcam and say to their audience of children, hey, isn't gambling great? You know what? Maybe traditional media was right. Maybe you shouldn't trust YouTube channels. Because if we keep going at this rate, if shady bastards are exposed any faster, we're not going to have any bloody YouTube channels left that are unsullied by this nonsense. It's about time those audiences wake the hell up and realize that those people are just manipulating you for money. He would not just, you know, take for himself. He always wanted to give to other people, give them the opportunity. It's like, well, hey, I mean, he, I guess in a way he sort of semi discovered the Yogg's cast in a way of, you know, they were already doing content, but he's no, the one. BS, he totally got, did. Got he totally did. You know I mean? Let's not so, beat around the bush. Yeah. Many of, of. Yeah. 
the top YouTubers over the years, John directly was responsible for them succeeding. So. And I know John never was the type. He never wanted to ask for donations. Uh, we ran the StarCraft team at a loss all the time. You know, we put money into things that we loved and passion projects, even though it wasn't fiscally responsible to do so. But that, you know, he had a passion for things. And yeah, and I'll miss that. I'll miss the passion he had for things, even if it wasn't responsible, even if it wasn't <laughs> fiscally possible, it, it was going to he was going to make it happen. Yeah. Fun fact um, might sound a bit morbid. Uh, but John wanted his uh, remains to be put in our GSTL championship trophy for StarCraft II. Amazing. Our Axiom of team. Of course he did. He fought so hard for so many years. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, his remains are going into a trophy because he was a champion.